So you want to put a T5 in your classic Ford. That's a great idea. I have one in my 62 Galaxy and I have one in my 64 and a half Ford Mustang. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So you want to put a T5 in your classic Ford. They're a fantastic five speed transmission and as long as you're not putting down too much power, they work extremely well. The problem comes with a T5 in trying to figure out how to actuate the clutch. From the factory, a T5 was designed to use a cable actuated clutch. You mount the end of a cable in this hole, the cable goes through into the clutch fork, and then when you pull on the cable, it actuates the clutch. On an old school four speed, say like a top loader, you would normally have a Z-bar to actuate your clutch. And with a Z-bar, it works by pushing from this direction back. So it's completely opposite of the T5. So that begs the question, how do we actuate the clutch? The first option is to maintain the OEM bell housing and the OEM Z-bar. And that's done by using one of these. This is an adapter plate that converts the top loader pattern to a T5 pattern. It also spaces the transmission out because the input shaft on a T5 is a little bit longer than that of a top loader. Seems like that would be the simplest solution. And honestly, that's the first thing that I did when I put a T5 in my Mustang. The problem is a T5 has very tight bearing tolerances. In other words, the bearings for the input shaft are very tight and there's not a lot of opportunity for misalignment. On an old school top loader, those bearings are a little more sloppy and that means you can get away with not having as tight a tolerance. So when you try and do a precision T5 into an old school bell housing, oftentimes things do not line up correctly. And this can cause all kinds of issues. In my opinion, not the best way to install a T5. I did it this way. I had issues with pilot bearings and noise, and I do not recommend going with an adapter plate. The next solution would be to use an aftermarket bell housing like the ones made by QuickTime. They are set up to accept either style clutch fork so you can actuate it going backwards using a Z-bar, or you can actuate it with a back to front setup like the OEM T5 bell housing. The problem with a QuickTime unit is they are extremely expensive. You're looking at $600 plus for said bell housing. A much more affordable option is to use a T5 specific bell housing out of a Fox body Mustang. Bolts right up to the transmission. It's the typical small block Ford bolt pattern on the other end, and your transmission can be slipped right into just about any classic Ford. But now we're back to the original problem. How do we actuate the clutch? I know a lot of guys do what the Fox body did. They hook up a cable clutch. There are some great designs out there for cable clutches, and there is nothing wrong with a cable clutch, but it's not my preferred method. My concerns with a cable clutch are having to route the cable and not having any sharp bends in it. So you have a cable coming out of the firewall and then it's got to sweep down under. And a lot of guys, especially if they have large motors and large headers, have had issues with burning through their cable clutch and having problems. Another solution is to mount a block in here and then use an old school clutch fork to reverse the direction of actuating the clutch. So the old school clutch fork fits in and it now converts it to a front to back motion and then you can maintain your old school Z-bar. Every single person that I've ever talked to that has done that has found that it is a stiff pedal. It's not quite the same as a quick time bell housing that uses the reverse clutch fork, 
that seems to be fairly smooth. But modifying this to use the old school Z-Bar always results in a stiff pedal. So if we don't want to use a cable clutch and we don't want to use a reversing block, how do we actuate the clutch? My preferred method is a hydraulic clutch. So this is the hydraulic clutch kit that I designed and built for my car. It mounts into the two mounting tabs on the side, uses a 7 8 inch slave cylinder, and that allows you to use a slightly smaller than 7 8 master cylinder, which reduces pedal effort. This is a spherical ball push rod, something I sell on my website, and it fits beautifully in this inner hole. And what's nice about this is as the clutch fork moves in its arc, the ball allows it to pivot so that it can stay straight and true in line with the slave cylinder. Having a push rod that runs parallel to the bore of the slave cylinder is going to prolong slave cylinder life. Now this push rod wouldn't normally be this long when installed on the vehicle. I sell them a little long so that a person can cut them to length and have them be correct for their application. This system works very well. It's smooth, you still get that clutch feeling. So as you are moving the pedal, as the clutch grabs or lets go, you can actually feel that in your foot, just like you could with the old school Z-Bar setup. The only downside to something like this, in my opinion, is getting all the air out. So a transmission like this typically slopes down at about a five degree angle. And that means that the front of the slave cylinder is going to be higher than the back of the slave cylinder. And inevitably, you get a little bit of a bubble in there. And that makes bleeding these quite challenging. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of kits over the years. And the number one complaint that I get is, how do I get all the air out? There are multiple techniques. The nice thing about hydraulics is they're absolute. So if we know what the bore of the slave cylinder is, and we know what the bore and stroke of the master cylinder is, then we can mathematically calculate exactly how much stroke we should have at the slave cylinder. And if we're getting less stroke than what the math says we should have, that means there's air in the system. When I tell that to customers, they say, but the clutch isn't spongy and I know how to bleed brakes. There's no air in the system. The rules for brakes don't apply to a hydraulic clutch. When you apply brakes, there is thousands of pounds of pressure, and it is that pressure that causes the spongy feel. On a hydraulic clutch, all we have is the force that it takes to engage the pressure plate. So we're dealing with less than 100 pounds. And so that's why you don't get a spongy feel. I wanted to point out one difference between this bracket, which I made many years ago, and the brackets that I'm currently selling. The brackets that I currently sell have a slotted hole here and a slotted hole here. And the reason for that is so that you don't have to use my slave cylinder. The slave cylinder that I had mocked up before is a perfect fit to those holes. But what if you want to use something different? What if you want to use this slave cylinder? Now, this is designed for a Nissan pickup. It's a three-quarter inch bore, so it's a little smaller bore. And what if you want to use this guy? The new slotted holes allow you to do that. I wanted to give people options so that they can set up their own hydraulic clutch and get it to work the way they want it to. So you may be wondering, what do I do if one of the tabs on my transmission is broken? Or what if I have a G-Force transmission that doesn't have those tabs? I've got a solution for that as well. This is the second T5 hydraulic clutch bracket that I offer. It uses this slave cylinder, which bolts in just like that, and it goes on the transmission tabs. This is a great option, like I said, for G-Force transmissions that do not have those side tabs, or if your car has 
a side tab that is broken. But what if I have a 94-95 T5 transmission? They have a 5 8 inch longer input shaft and require a different bell housing. And that different bell housing has the window for the clutch fork down here. Then how do I actuate the clutch? Well, I have a bracket for that too. This is my 94-95 T5 clutch bracket, and it works the same way. It mounts to the tabs, the window would be down here, the slave cylinder mounts there and pushes, and is a fantastic option if you have one of the newer T5 transmissions. All three of my T5 kits come with all the hardware needed. They also come with a firewall reinforcement plate that goes on the inside of the firewall and helps reinforce it where you mount the master cylinder. Now the pattern on this is specific to a Willwood style master, but it has been used for other masters as well. What if you want to put a T5 in your vehicle and you have pretty good fabrication skills and you don't want to buy one of my brackets? Fantastic. I am more than happy to help out in any way that I can. If you've got any questions, if there's anything that I can help with, I'm happy to do so. The other piece is I sell the accessories. So if you don't need the bracket, let's say you just need a slave cylinder and a master cylinder and a line kit to connect them, I sell those parts and pieces as well. And I am willing to sell entire kits. I'm willing to sell parts and pieces. Even if you don't buy parts from me, my policy is I'm willing to help you. So if you have any questions, if you're designing a hydraulic clutch and you need any advice, don't hesitate to contact me through my website. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.